the most beautiful country on earth, three most livable cities in Canada, over 14,000 graduates, and 20 unique programs in English. Welcome to Canada. Welcome to Sprout Shaw Language College. This is Ilias. As the Pathway Program Manager and the Marketing Manager for Europe, I will share with you today how you can live, study and work in Canada. Canada stands out with its safe, multicultural society, quality of education and high living standards. These things make Canada one of the most reputable countries in the world. It is also more affordable to study in Canada than other countries like the US and UK. Here, you can meet and study with students from over 75 different countries and also study and work through our career college. Or, you can enroll in our pathway program to study at Canada's top colleges and universities while working 20 hours per week to obtain work experience in an English-speaking country. If you want to be a part of this great experience at Spratcha Language College, apply today. Now, it's time for Canada. Hello, afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Pathway Webinar Series. My name is Ilias, and I'm the Pathway Program Manager here at uh, SSLC, joining you uh, once again live from our Vancouver campus. And uh, I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe. Today, uh, we have our Pathway partner, Vancouver Island University, VIU, joining us. And uh, we have Amira and Mikhail joining us today, representing the university. Hello, guys. How are you today? Good. Good. Thank you. Doing well. Thanks, Elias. Great. Uh, it's, it's nice to have you uh, in our webinar today. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, so today, we're going to talk about uh, VIU's uh, programs. Uh, admission uh, requirements, admission processes, and uh, of course, how you can easily transition from SSLC's pathway program, which is uh, the uh, EP program, English for Post-Secondary Education, to uh, VIU's uh, programs, uh, either undergraduate or postgraduate. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking forward to uh, learning more about VIU today. Um, so why don't we uh, first get to start with you guys. Let's get to know you first. Why don't you uh, introduce uh, yourselves quickly to our audience and then uh, we can go ahead with your presentation. And then uh, uh, in the end, we'll do, we'll do a Q&A. And if we have questions from our audience, I'll, I'll be asking uh, uh, those questions too so we can answer them. That sounds perfect. Thank you, Elias. Uh, maybe ladies first. Let's let's start sure. with Amira. Let's get to know you first. Okay. Uh, so my name is Amira. I'm very happy to be here. We're very happy to support a partner like SSLC. I am a, a recruiter, international student recruiter at Vancouver Island University, mm -hmm. and I'm based in Nanaimo on Vancouver Island, along with my colleague Mikhail. And I specialize in the markets of Africa, Canada, and the U.S. And I'm myself a VIU graduate, so I took their MBA program before I started working with them. So I'd be happy to answer questions from both the student and the employee perspective. Great, great. And uh, Mikhail? So m my name is Mikhail, equally happy to be here today. Um, just like Amira mentioned as well, I'm based in Nanaimo. I'm in the same position, but focusing on slightly different region. Mm -hmm. My area of focus is Middle East and uh, Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, I myself, a recent um, immigrant to Canada, um, I was living in the Middle East for quite some time, moved to Canada a couple of years ago. And uh, now I'm uh, sharing the same passion for Canada with international students as I have it now, as I have it myself. Nice. So I'm happy, happy to answer the question. 
questions related to the transition period, um, to Canada culture, and what Great. you can expect here on campus. Great. And Mikhail, I believe you lived in Dubai before? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, for we, six we, years. Yeah, we actually met uh, with Mikhail uh, uh -huh. in... Uh, back in October, I believe, we met in uh, Languages Canada Trade Mission. Uh, we met in Moscow. Right. Uh, and then we were in Kiev together. Uh, and you came to Turkey for the fairs, right? As well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we were, yeah, we first actually met uh, overseas. <laughs> so it's, it's uh, good to see you again here. And thank you again right. for joining. Thank you both of you for joining. So uh, uh, I'm a pathway manager here at uh, uh, SSLC, but I also oversee uh, uh, marketing for, for Turkey and for Europe, just mm -hmm. like uh, Mikhail. And so I get to, I get to meet uh, my colleagues uh, uh, mostly, and we usually see, see each other uh, during these uh, uh, business trips. All right. Um, so we have, I believe we have a video to play first. Uh, let's do this uh, introduction video about VIU and then we can go ahead with your presentation afterwards. Here we are. Okay, here we are again. Uh, thank you for the video, Jim. Uh, so let's let's start with your PowerPoint presentation, Amira, mm -hmm. and then uh, let's get to know more about VIU. Okay, so just while I put that up, I'm going to say that I always feel a bit nostalgic watching that video, especially now with COVID, because mm -hmm. we can't be out there, we can't be connecting with students the way we would like to. Mm -hmm. So I hope that everything resumes back to normal or as a new normal soon so that we can welcome you back to campus and back to Canada soon. Um, yeah. So thank you very much, Ilias. Yes. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, we, we wish uh, for the same thing in our end as well. Um, we are uh, actually back in our campuses in Vancouver and Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, um, it's not like before, right? We can't have uh, too many students in a classroom. So, um, and I believe, are you, have you switched to online uh, for the fall as well at VIU? We have, so we're going to be implementing a hybrid model. Okay. The majority will be online classes and there's a couple where there is a larger face-to-face -face component like the culinary program. Right. But uh, a lot of it will be uh, will be online and um, reduced in class interaction. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. So right. allow me to jump straight in, Elias. Sure. Yeah. Let's go. 
And I know you've uh, had a number of your pathway partners on here, some of them from Vancouver Island. Most recently was probably University of Victoria. That's so right. I'll just skim over the location and identify where exactly we are. Sure. Um, so we are on Vancouver Island. We're in the second largest city on the island, which is the city of Nanaimo. Mm -hmm. And we're just a short distance away from Vancouver. As an international student traveling to our university, you would stop in Vancouver, clear your immigration, and then take a short plane ride across to Nanaimo. It's a 20 minute flight. Mm -hmm. And we do have a national airport in Nanaimo. Um, and as a student, you can always go back and forth over the weekends. If you'd like to go by ferry, if you'd like to try the, the float plane once in a while, that's also mm -hmm. an option that you have. And again, BC, Vancouver, Victoria, Nanaimo, we are all very privileged to live in an incredible province with a lot of outdoor activities, with fantastic weather. Today it is 31 degrees in Nanaimo and it is hot. And I say that to you as a Kenyan who is used to much warmer weather, but today I'm feeling hot in Nanaimo. <laughs> Uh, there's a lot of extracurricular activities. You can see some of them listed on the on the slide. And I hope that when you are here, we will allow you to explore some of them a bit more. So let me break down into our university and what the identity of our university is. We are a medium sized public university in Canada. We have around 15,000 students in total on four different campuses. The Nanaimo campus is the largest and it is where the majority of programs for international students would be offered. And we have around 2,300 international students representing 93 countries. So it is very multicultural and very diverse. Mm -hmm. We have a history as a university. 20 years ago, we were uh, known as a college and we've transitioned into a university. Mm -hmm. So many of the strengths of a college we have taken forward with us. Uh, one of those is the small class sizes. The mm -hmm. second is the emphasis on teaching. Mm -hmm. And we were nominated for a Global Teaching Excellence Award in 2018. So that's a picture of who we are, mm -hmm. why you should choose us. On the left hand side, I've mentioned the small classrooms. We are the only university to have a designated faculty for international education. So all of your needs as an international student would be taken care of in one place. And wow. in terms of our engagement with the community, we're very connected, particularly with the business. Uh, we often find that VIU graduates get preferential treatment when applying for jobs in Nanaimo because they like to support their own. Mm -hmm. uh, I've already talked about the weather. And one thing which I think it hits the pocket of everyone is the affordable cost of living. So when you compare Nanaimo as a city of 90,000 people to some of the larger cities like Vancouver and Toronto, it is significantly more affordable to live here. And in a future slide, you'll see that our the cost of our programs, the tuition costs, is also very affordable. Elias, I know I'm, I talk too fast sometimes, so if I have to slow down, please do tell no, me. No, it's good. If, if I feel like you're going too fast, I'll slow you down. Don't worry. Okay. And Mikhail, okay. you're, you're welcome to jump in. Okay, so um, I mentioned that we are the only university in Canada with a faculty for international education. And what this means for you as a student is you have a house on campus, basically, where mm -hmm. you can come any of your needs in terms of academic immigration, counseling, housing, all of that is taken care of in one place. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling homesick, you have a team, probably a lot of new immigrants to Canada who speak your, your first language, they'll chat with you, they'll connect with you, they'll introduce you to Canadian culture, things like Thanksgiving, our Halloween celebrations, the St. Paddy's Day, all of that can be, that support can be provided for you by our faculty. And in terms of housing, there are three options that you would have. We have a residence on campus, as a students coming to us through the SSLC pathway, you are, of course, very welcome to stay in our residences. Mm -hmm. They are literally across the road from campus, so you would not need to take a bus. Mm -hmm. You can prepare your own meals in residences or you can eat in one of our two cafeterias. We also have our own homestay program run by the university. So if you prefer to live with a Canadian family, we can always set that up for you. And if you're a mature student, perhaps coming with a family and you'd like to live off campus, we have an off campus housing coordinator who can guide you on how to sign a rental lease in the Canadian environment. VIU is also known for its athletic teams and we are Pacific West champions in a number of sports. 
So we do encourage you to balance your academic pursuits along with health, good health, with activity and with sports. So you'll see the sports that we offer listed here. If you are a uh, extremely strong in a particular sport and you'd like to try out for our teams, we'd be welcome to have that happen. And uh, maybe you'll talk about this later on, but do you have uh, any scholarship opportunities uh, with your teams? We do, and uh, Mikhail and I can definitely take that question for you. Should we take that now? Would you uh, Maybe it? we can talk about it later in the end. Okay, all right, no okay. worries. We'll make a note. Okay. So I'm gonna jump straight into the programs. We have okay. undergraduate programs, which are a one-year certificate, two-year diploma, and a four-year degree. And mm -hmm. we also have graduate programs, which are postgraduate diplomas and master's programs. Coming through the SSLC pathway, you are welcome to go into any of those. Our entry requirements, the basic entry requirements are listed on this page. Mm -hmm. So you would need a high school transcript in your first language. And if that is not English, it would need to be translated to English. And the English score you would require for direct entry would be a 6.5 IELTS or a Duolingo of 110 or a TOEFL of 88. Great. Our pathway with SSLC is where you would take the EPE program that Ilyas mentioned. Mm -hmm. You would continue into a one semester of university preparation five at VIU. Mm -hmm. And then after that, you would directly enter our undergraduate programs. And Amira, at this point, I have a few questions. Of so course. of course, our EP program is a 12 week program. So mm -hmm. once students complete successfully complete our EP program, uh, they'll be able to transfer to university preparation five. That's right. Right. And with that uh, UP five course, are they able to take any other academic courses towards their degrees or diplomas or certificates? Absolutely. So I prepared a slide on that to show you. Great. And the second option for them is coming from EPE mm -hmm. into VIU into a program that we call Bridge VIU. Mm -hmm. And that is where you combine the 13th semester UP5, University mm -hmm. Preparation 5. Mm -hmm. And you can also take an academic first year course. So that when you are entering your undergraduate degree or diploma, you are already taking six academic credits forward with you. Great. So that is an option that you do have. Great. And uh, in UP5, uh, do, they, do students mostly work on their uh, English or? Are there UP5, any? yep, absolutely. Mm -hmm. UP5 covers four key areas. It's the reading, mm -hmm. writing, listening, and speaking, okay. similar to do at SSLC, mm -hmm. but it's got a very strong emphasis on academic English mm -hmm. rather than communication English. So okay. we are preparing you to write assignments, essays, make academic presentations, uh, researching, whether it's the APA style, the MLA style, all of that is condensed into this university preparation course. Great. Okay. On the next slide, I do want to mention the cost of doing that as a semester because with the um, University Preparation 5 or the Bridge VIU, mm -hmm. there are different elements. Mm -hmm. So, of course, there is an application fee. The tuition for the 13 weeks for, for University Preparation is 5100 mm -hmm. There's a student fees and ancillary fees component, and there's the compulsory medical insurance, which you would pay in your first semester. If you're already on MSP because you've been in Canada for a while, then mm -hmm. that cost would be waived. So you would just provide proof of your MSP. Oh, great. But uh, don't they, uh, in, this tu in the uh, tuition fees, don't you also include uh, uh, a med private medical insurance? So this oh. is the, this medical insurance is the private. Okay. And it's oh, it's the in your first semester at VIU. Okay. Unless you have the MSP already. MSP. All right. I see. Yeah. And if you're planning to go into the bridge VIU, you would pay 2180 on top for the academic course that you were taking. In their first semesters? Correct. Okay, great. Okay. So I'll now go into the different faculties and the programs that you would be able to take at our university. Mm -hmm. This is the arts, design and performing arts faculty. So you can see that we offer two year diplomas in jazz studies, visual arts and in technical theater and theater. And there is a laddering system so that if you start, for instance, with a two-year visual arts diploma, you can ladder into the Bachelor of Arts 
mm -hmm. in visual arts. So the third and fourth year would be a top up. There's also a four year degree in graphic design and an in interior design. Mm -hmm. One of the admission requirements, particularly in this faculty would be a portfolio. We would want to see artwork that you have done in the past and mm -hmm. the different kinds of areas. So perhaps uh, a photograph of a painting you've done, of uh, a sculpture, of a drawing, different elements of art. Sure. A second faculty is Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences, and this is known as the Bachelor of Arts program. Mm -hmm. You can take uh, various majors and minors, which are listed on the side on the left. Mm -hmm. Some of the popular ones that I'd like to highlight for you are Criminology, which is offered as a diploma and as a degree. Physical Education, which is also offered as a two-year diploma and as a four-year degree in Kinesiology. A psychology program is also popular. You can take it in a Bachelor of Arts where it is theoretical psychology or as a Bachelor of Science where it is clinical psychology. Mm -hmm. And then digital media studies with everything that's happening in the world and how interconnected we are with computers. Uh, this is a growing field and of a lot of interest currently. So on, on your chart, if it's a capital M, that means major. And if it's a lower M, it's minor, right? That's correct, yes. And what does H stand for? So an H stands for an honors. Honors, okay. In which case, for, for example, you would graduate with a Bachelor of Arts with honors in English. I and see. It, it means that you would be taking some extra courses in your fourth year mm -hmm. to allow you that honors credential. Okay, and I assume uh, students need to maintain certain GPA requirements for, for honors. Absolutely, yes. I see, all right. If you're a strong student, you are able to take a double major. Uh, if you're a weaker student, you could take a double minor, but mm -hmm. typically you would take one major and one minor. One minor, yeah. So the next faculty, and I'm sure this is a popular one across Canadian schools, and it is in ours especially, is the business and management, mm -hmm. where you could take a one-year certificate in business, a two-year diploma in business or in applied business technology, Mm -hmm. four-year degree in business administration with seven different specializations offered. And a prerequisite for your admission requirement in this case would be the Mathematics 12 or Pre-Calculus 12. Mm -hmm. And you need a minimum. Mikhail, is it a C or is it a C plus? Um, it used to be C. Uh, we'll see about the next year, 2021, for fall 2021. It might transition to C plus. Thank you. That one always confuses me. Um, Amira? Yes. I have a question here. If the students don't have their math 12 or pre-calculus 12, mm -hmm. is there a way to uh, take this at VIU and do the upgrading? Or can they enter, let's say, uh, they're admitted into uh, Bachelor of Arts? let's say in economics or something else and then are they able to transition into a bba program later on mikhail would you like me to take that or are you happy to do that uh, i can try to answer and you can maybe uh supplement my sure my answer so um of course when student applies uh, our admission um, team assesses their uh, application their personal mm -hmm. profile sometimes depending on the country uh grade 12 is not even required let's say if you're a student from russia where there is mm -hmm. only 11 grades of school mm -hmm. then grade 12 doesn't exist and therefore mm -hmm. grade 11 math is considered as grade 12 but it's not the case for most of the students mm -hmm. uh, for most of the international students so if they do not have a grade 12 they're welcome to enroll into um, exploratory studies so-called expo on our campus mm -hmm. um, it's a, a separate course ranging between six to twelve months which mm -hmm. allows students to upgrade their grades mm -hmm. or just explore the options available at VIU if they are not quite certain about degrees if they're choosing between let's say BBA and Bachelor of Arts mm -hmm. so they can upgrade their grades take um, a few courses meet the admission requirements and take additional courses, regular curricular courses um, simultaneously. And therefore, once they're done with the expo six or 12 months later, they will mm -hmm. already be ahead of their peers by completing more courses. So it's, um, 
it's a pathway into a standard four-year bachelor degree, but the one which gives more flexibility to the student. I see. So it's kind of like uh, the, the Expo program is kind of like a general arts and sciences program that students would usually take in a college and then transfer to a university. Is that correct? A similar approach. Where, where yeah. they can explore uh, first and second year courses in different fields. And then uh, after that, they can move on to <clears throat> either Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Business Administration or something right. else. Yep. I see. Yeah, it's, it's a great option. I do want to mention one thing. Uh, when you're applying to the Bachelor of Business degree, mm -hmm. and you do not need to select your specialization at the time of application, you would mm -hmm. only need to choose that at the end of the first year. I see. OK. OK. And from second year onwards, you are now a BBA in the accounting stream or in the economic stream. OK. So they, they specialize in their uh, students, specialize in their second years. Correct. From second year onwards. Okay, great. Yes. All right, we can move on. Right, so the next faculty is Education, Health and Human Services. And if you are planning to become a teacher in Canada, then you would need to take a Bachelor of Education, mm -hmm. which is a five-year program. And it allows you to take the teacher certification and become a teacher at a school district or anywhere else in Canada. We also offer other programs in education. One is a B.Ed. in Physical Education. Mm -hmm. And there's a Bachelor of Arts in Child and Youth Care, and that is looking at education more from the policy and policy development side. Uh, the diploma options in terms of education, there is an early childhood education two-year program, and mm -hmm. there is a child and youth care two-year diploma as well. And on the health and human services, we have a dental assistant certificate in one mm -hmm. year and a dental mm -hmm. hygienist two-year diploma. And I assume all of these programs are open to international students. Absolutely. Everything I'm showing you today is open for internationals. Great. So the Bachelor of Science, like the Bachelor of Arts, which we talked mm -hmm. about, has the similar major minor structure. Mm -hmm. You can see these listed on the left. And there are more diplomas in the science faculty. So you could take computing science as a diploma or as a degree. Um, the same with resource ma management officer technology, and I'll show you in the next slide, that can ladder into other programs in a, in a Bachelor of Science. With engineering in particular, I do want to spend some time on it. Mm -hmm. So we offer it as a one-year engineering certificate, okay. which allows you to transfer in your second year to our pathway partners, similarly to what we have with you. Mm -hmm. And our pathway partners for engineering are UBC, SFU, University of Victoria and uh, UVic. UVic. Yes. So that would be right. where you take the one year certificate with us and then you continue in your second year to those universities. And again, I assume uh, students need to maintain certain GPA requirements and they need to get the certificate. So is that is that two semesters? That's right. Engineering certificate is a two semester program. Mm -hmm. And yes, you would need to meet the entry requirements for the university you're continuing to. Mm -hmm. But the, the benefit of starting with us is that you would need on average a GPA of 85% to start our engineering program. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you're applying directly to a university like UBC, you mm -hmm. would need a 95% GPA to enter. Right. Mm -hmm. So there is that advantage. The second is that our class sizes in engineering and across the university are around 20 to 30 students. Mm -hmm. With UBC, you would have 400 students in your first year class. So the attention you get from teachers, the kind of coaching and mentoring that you get is, is much higher with VIU. And I believe another advantage would be to have lower tuition fees. Absolutely, I was just coming to that. And okay. then, of course, you save some money in your first year. You figure Canada out before you transfer to a different city mm -hmm. where you have higher expenses. Okay. Uh, with engineering, we also offer a two-year engineering technologist diploma. So if you are interested in the field, but you do not want to commit to a full engineering degree, mm -hmm. then this two-year diploma would be a, a good way to enter the Canadian workforce mm -hmm. at a lower entry, entry level, but still within the same field. Great. 
going on to hospitality and tourism, and this is a popular one across all BC schools, mm -hmm. various one-year certificate and two-year diploma options, all of them have a work experience component, like a co-op, so you would be getting some hands-on experience as part of the academic program. So there's culinary, hospitality, and tourism as shown on the screen. And then moving into our graduate programs, the standard entry requirement would be a 7.0 IELTS or a Duolingo of 115. We have committed to accepting Duolingo for this semester in mm -hmm. September and for the spring semester in January 2021. Mm -hmm. But we are not yet sure of whether we will for September 2021. See. But the pathway coming in from SSLC into master's programs mm -hmm. would be the EPE with you. Mm -hmm. our university preparation and then a semester of grad prep mm -hmm. to bring you up to a uh, master's level and then you would go directly into the postgraduate program so they would spend a semester in up5 and then another semester in grad prep right and what do they exactly do in grad prep additional english academic english no so grad prep is not an esl course it's okay. a it's a master's research and um, terminology course. So it's very defined by the program you're going to go into. So if you're doing the MBA next, you would be looking at business cases. You would be looking at how to write a business paper or a presentation. Mm -hmm. So it's very tailored. Great. And the cost for that pathway, you would have the UP5 in the left-hand column and then your graduate preparation semester on the right. So that's around 10,000 something? That's right, yes. And there are three entry dates in the year, uh, January, May, and September. So you could do your upgrading in the summer as well to make a September academic start. Nice. I'm very conscious of the time, so I'm going to go straight into the master's programs. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a number of programs in the business faculty. The first is a graduate certificate in business. It's a one-year program with a September start and a January start. Mm -hmm. If you are planning to go into our MBA, but you do not meet the minimum B average that is required to enter the MBA, you should start with this certificate, spend mm -hmm. a year in it, and then enter the MBA program. As long as you have the work experience needed to go into the MBA, which is a minimum one year. The other option... Sorry, Elias, did I cut no, you off? Go ahead, go ahead. The other option is where you would take the graduate certificate in business because your undergraduate is in a non-business area. Mm -hmm. And after doing a one year in the certificate, you continue to either the diploma in international trade, which is a one year, mm -hmm. or to the graduate diploma in project management, which is also a one year. Both of these diplomas are very tailored to the industry. So you are getting mm -hmm. industry certification with mm -hmm. it. And of course, it meets the magic number of two years in a postgraduate program so that you qualify for the three-year postgraduate work permit. So can, can students not get into graduate diploma in international trade or what was the next one? Uh, project management. Project management directly. Do they have to do the graduate certificate first or...? They can enter the diploma, either of the diploma programs directly if they have an uh, undergraduate in business and they okay. have a B average. B average. Yes. And what was the certificate program? And the certificate program, you need a C plus average to get into mm -hmm. it. In business, okay. And it can be a non-business or a business background. Um, so when they move on from certificate to diploma program, mm -hmm. is it like one plus two or they just do the certificate in one year and they transfer their uh, courses and they just do another year in diploma program and they're done? Exactly. It's a one plus one. Okay. Yes. Great. Okay. And how about, how about for the master's program? Absolutely. So if they do the graduate certificate in business, mm -hmm. I'm just going to go back to that slide. Okay. It's a one-year program for the graduate certificate in business, and then mm -hmm. they would take our 20-month MBA separately from that. It's separate, okay. Yes. The third diploma that we offer, which is a two-year graduate diploma, is in hospitality management, mm -hmm. and it is for students from a non-hospitality or a hospitality background 
who know they want to become a hospitality, uh, be in the, in the management sector in the hospitality industry. And this has a September start. And there is a um, compulsory internship with this program. Mm -hmm. And there is also with our MBA, which is our flagship business program in the postgraduate. It is a 20 month program. You can start in September or in January. Um, as I mentioned, compulsory internship. And to enter the MBA directly, you need a B average in your undergraduate, either business or non-business, and you need a minimum one year of work experience. And uh, you're a graduate of, of this program? I am, yes. Great. So of course, I would recommend it. I think it's fantastic, but I think I might be a little biased. What if we uh, what if we don't have uh, B average or B plus average, but we have a lot of uh, work experience? Then you would start with the graduate certificate in business mm -hmm. and then continue into the MBA. OK, that's an option, too. Yes. All right. And no GMAT required for this program. Correct. No GMAT. Perfect. I'm going to continue now with the other master's programs we have. And I do want to emphasize the affordable tuition costs for these masters. Mm -hmm. uh, they are a two year program. They have September starts and mm -hmm. the full program tuition for two years is 25,000 Canadian. Mm -hmm. With the sustainable leisure management masters, your first year is in class. You're doing a lot of theory. Your second year, you are working in a self paced model where you are being supervised by your thesis uh, director. Okay. Our master. And are, are you are you still uh, accepting applications for this fall for for these programs? I have two slides right at the end, which show you the ones that are still open for September sure. and January. Great, you're very organized. I hope so. <laughs> uh, so look. I, the... I won't have I won't have any questions to ask in the end. Seriously. <laughs> no, you're gonna have to ask Mikhail one or two, or he'll feel a little left okay. out <laughs> so the master of community planning is a two-year program a september start again the twenty-five thousand. this mm -hmm. is for students from an architecture or a civil engineering or a civil design program because they want to look at what urban cities are, and urban living spaces are designed like mm -hmm. it is an absolutely fascinating one if i had not taken the mba i would have gone for this one myself uh, we have two masters in education. One is in educational leadership. Mm -hmm. Again, a two year September start. It doesn't allow you to become a teacher in a public school in Canada, but we are preparing you to take an administrative position at a university or in a school district. Maybe uh, me and Mikhail should consider this program. <laughs> Mikhail's racked up plenty of education already, I think. <laughs> I have masters of in education. Yeah. Oh, okay. But, but, I but if I didn't have it, I would consider this. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then the second masters in education is in special education. So this one prepares you to work in a school or with children who have special needs. It is again a two year program uh, mm -hmm. with a September start. And then the last masters program we have is in geographic information systems. This is for students who have a background in computer science, geography, or geoscience, and who want to look at how IT and data sync together. And it is a very prestigious one and fantastic work opportunities after graduating. Uh, even before graduating, uh, we met with professors uh, last year. They told us a bit about the opportunities the current students have um, on and off campus. Um, so lots of choices, great salaries. So I was a, a bit envy myself. Would you have taken this one as your third master's, Mikhail? Maybe. <laughs> so a quick look at uh, summary of the costs. On the right hand side, we've given you an average budget that you should be looking at when you're planning your undergraduate studies at VIU. Mm -hmm. uh, so the tuition fees on the top, student fees, books. We recommend 1000 per month for your food and accommodation, uh, miscellaneous costs, and then public transport. And then quick run through the application process. Mm -hmm. 
we generally accept applications between October 1st and March 31st. Um, but this year, we have extended the application deadline for our September and our January start. Mm -hmm. We have an application form on our website. You'd fill it in, upload the documents you re requested, uh, pay an application fee of 150 and submit it. Depending on when in the application season you apply, it would be between two to six weeks to get a response from us. Mm -hmm. The six weeks is closer for the master's programs because the faculty meets and vets each application. So I would say between two to four weeks, you're, you're definitely going to hear back from us. So at this point, uh, maybe we can talk about how students can apply through SSLC. Mm -hmm. uh, so as soon as students are admitted into our EP program, let's say, uh, mm -hmm. we have their LOA from our EP program. I believe we are ready to uh, submit an application with the, support, with the supporting documents. That's right. right? Yes. And with the application fee. Yes. Uh, so once we submit everything with our EPA LOA mm -hmm. and we hear back from you within two to six weeks, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. do we um, do we get an offer first? Uh, do we get a conditional letter of acceptance? Um, and once they get once students get the offer, do they have to make any uh, tuition deposits? Can we talk about these a little bit? Absolutely, Mikhail. May I ask you to take that while I drink some water? Um, okay, so basically, Elias, you've covered the most of the process already. So mm -hmm. students uh, submit their application, then within uh, two to six weeks, they receive offer letter. Mm -hmm. It can be either conditional or non-conditional, depending not only on language, um, if um, if language skills of the student, but also the academic uh, level. Okay. Uh, the offer letter will mention the deposit tuition deposit will, which needs to be paid by the student. Once the VIU receives that deposit, our admissions team will is issue an LOA with which um, that's a second um, step. And with the LOA, student will be um, applying for the study permit if they have to apply. Uh, if the international student in Canada, um, then uh, the pr the process, maybe Amira, you know a bit more about the pathways between the Canada-based students. So I believe, uh, Ilyas, if they are already with you in mm -hmm. Canada on um, on a study permit, then mm -hmm. it would just be a matter of recording that they're changing the DLI or uh, requ requesting a new study permit on our DLI mm -hmm. um, or an extension. So it would be a lot more streamlined if you're already in an SSLC program because mm -hmm. you're already in Canada um, and you're already in the Canadian immigration system. Mm -hmm. And how much is that uh, tuition deposit, or does it uh, differ uh, program by program? Normally, it's equivalent to the first semester fees, okay. um, plus insurance if they have to pay. Um, so okay. that's the amount. And just like Amira said, if a stu student has a valid study permit, in most cases, it's a simple procedure of changing a DLI online right. on the RSCC account. Uh, yeah, they have to apply for an extension or a new study permit because they're switching from ESL to um, ESL to yeah to university. So, okay. All right. I, I do want to mention that we have uh, two certified immigration professionals at VIU. So once you are our student, we would help you through all those processes. There's no cost applied, and mm -hmm. we would handhold everything for you. Great. And, and likewise, I can help our students uh, here in BC or in Toronto. Uh, I'm an RCIC myself, so. Wonderful. Yeah, I'm happy to help them here as well. Oh, excellent. That Thank yeah. you for mentioning, Elias. I had no idea. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah. OK. So uh, I promised you an open. update on applications. OK. So uh, we have, we're still accepting applications for September start, and we will be until August 7th. Okay. So if you're planning to apply for the fall and you are currently in EPE at SSLC, then you can still apply for these programs, the BA, Business, Science, Hospitality, Expo Studies that Mikhail took us through, mm -hmm. and Culinary Arts and the Visual Arts program. If you're looking at January, the programs are listed on the right-hand side, and we will be accepting applications to January until August 31st. 
So for, for January intake, your deadline is August 31st? That's right, yes. Okay. And on my next slide, I have the graduate programs that are still open. Okay. So for the fall, the Masters of Sustainable Leisure, Graduate Certificate in Business, and the Diploma in Project Management. You can begin that in September with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, for January, the MBA, the Graduate Certificate in Business, and the Diploma in Hospitality Management. And I don't need to mention that if you're a student already in Canada, uh, whether it's the Toronto, Victoria, Vancouver school, it will be much easier for you to continue your studies because you're in the country. You're not worried about entering through the borders. All right. And then my final slide is my, my contacts, but I would mm -hmm. prefer for them to contact you, Elias. Mm -hmm. And um, you would be funneling the applications through. Exactly. So when we have uh, applications, of course, they go uh, through me or our pathway coordinator in Toronto. Uh, we contact you on behalf of our students. We submit their applications. Uh, you know, I've talked about this in our past webinars as well, but it's always good to remind uh, our prospective students out there. So we take care of everything. And thanks to uh, you guys over there, uh, you you process everything and then uh, you let us know uh, the final decision and you send the necessary uh, documents to myself or to my colleague in Toronto. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, I guess we're done with the presentation. So thank you so much. That was uh, that was great. Uh, very well uh, prepared. Uh, you didn't have, uh, you know, I don't have any questions to ask now, but <laughs> maybe I can choose a few uh, hard ones for Mikael. But he has to leave in eight minutes. So uh, just uh, just before we jump into the questions, I would sure. encourage I would encourage um, potential students to check our our Facebook page as well. Uh, okay. We do post the videos of your campus, um, some videos on, on YouTube as well. So it's a great way to get familiarized with the um, campus environment before students transition to Nanaimo. And uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, part of your questions or not, but uh, I could uh, speak for a minute about scholarships. Sure. Yeah, definitely. Great. So there is there is a range of scholarships available to international students. For some of them, students don't even have to apply for. Once mm -hmm. they submit the application, they are automatically considered for those scholarships. Um, and uh, in general, these are uh, VIU entrance scholarships. They're about two thousand Canadian dollars. Uh, then uh, separate scholarships for IB diploma graduates. Mm -hmm. Then there are regional scholarships as well. They are the largest ones, about, about 5,000 Canadian dollars, but they're limited per region. Mm -hmm. uh, and if student is uh, keen on sports, like Amira mentioned earlier, uh, you don't have to be a professional athlete, but if you have, uh, let's say, a video resume portfolio of your uh, place, of your performances, then you can s uh, submit this to our coaches. They will review. Um, uh, student skills and they may be receiving athletic scholarship as well. Um, more information is on our website. Great, so uh, there are lots of opportunities uh, for scholarships for students, so that's great. But uh, also your, your tuition fees are very affordable. Uh, mm -hmm. You said it's 16,500, right? Per year for undergraduate studies at least. Yes. Yeah. So that's, that's great. In some cases, it's only one third of what students would expect to pay at some other institutions. Exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, that's another uh, advantage of VIU, studying at VIU, I would say. Okay, uh, we can let you go if you need to go, Mikhail. I have about five minutes. Okay, uh, we have your website on, I think. Mm -hmm. Jem, put this up over here so you can, this is VIU's website, and you can easily navigate through their websites right there. You know, you yeah. go to the main menu, and you can, if you click on the menu again, you'll see the programs. I always go there and check your mm -hmm. programs. And I, I would just, yeah. I would encourage students to click on the International Students tab right on top, and that will take them to pages relevant to international students. Great, and they um, can so find uh, more information about VIU. Yes, I believe. Great. And Elias, I would encourage you, once we are back to some kind of a, a normal rhythm, 
-hmm. I would encourage you to bring a group of your students across to the island, visit us. We will show you around. We'd be happy to host you for the day. Yeah. Uh, arrange some meetings with key faculty uh, exactly. and show you, show you Nanaimo. Yeah, it's it's great that you mentioned that, Amira. Uh, this is uh, this is SSLC's advantage. You know, we we take our students on campus tours, and uh, we've done that with you in the past. So, you know, and you actually uh, paid for our students' airfare. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it was it was a good experience for them. So, and we also invite our partners to uh, come and do. A presentation in our campuses. So I hope when things are better, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be visiting each other's uh, campuses uh, very soon, I hope. And so, Mikhail and I would be happy to be wherever you want us to be. Yeah, and uh, I'd like to, uh, you know, go on a, a seaplane and, and come to the demo. <laughs> yes. And of course, we, we also have a campus in, in Vancouver Island in Victoria, right? So it's... Mm -hmm. It's not too far, you know, Victoria and Nanaimo. So uh, we also have students there. So it's it's a great advantage for our students uh, to start in our Victoria campus and then move on to uh, perhaps VIU in Nanaimo. Absolutely. All right. Um, I don't think I have any specific questions left. So I've asked most of them during your presentation. Uh, and you basically answered uh, everything, you know, in terms of, uh accommodation there you know tuition fees we touched based on 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 your programs uh and how students can easily transition from our pathway program which mm -hmm. is EP, to your up5 and then either move on to their first years or uh to grad grad prep and then move on to their uh graduate uh, degrees or diplomas uh so it's great. I actually, I, I have a question here. Is it the same thing for if if students want to join graduate certificate or diploma, do they still have to go through grad prep or they can move from UP5 to your uh, graduate certificates or diplomas? Mikhail? Uh, Amira? <laughs> you, have, you have three minutes. <laughs> uh, um, well, I, I don't want to give a wrong information here. I want to be hundred percent sure. Okay, so, okay, so definitely did I you off guard there. <laughs> That's okay. I'm, I'm happy to take it. I, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, Mikhail. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, if students want to go into our uh, graduate certificate in business, they would need to either come in with an IELTS score of seven point zero, or they need to take um, the EPE, UP five grad prep, and then graduate certificate in business. So it's the same level as all our graduate programs, okay. all of which need the 7.0 IELTS for entry. Okay. So they would need to do UP5 and then grad prep. Right. Okay. Yeah. Great. Um, if we have questions on Facebook or here, we can take them now. Uh, you can ask your questions uh, on the chat box or you can just click on ask a question tab. Uh, but if not, we can slowly wrap it up uh, here. Uh, and it's almost four, so Mikhail has to leave anyways. But Amira can stay a little Absolutely. bit longer. Yes. So I'd like to I'd like to thank both of you uh, once again for joining us today. Uh, again, that was a great presentation. And uh, uh, Mikhail, uh, we can let you go now, and I'll just continue on. Thank you. A little bit more, five five minutes more, and unless you want to add something. Thank you very right. much, Mikhail. Take care. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, so that's, uh, that's uh, pretty much it for, for today's webinar. Uh, we can maybe quickly uh, go through our, our website with Jem. Uh, I mention this all the time. Nidia says, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nidia, for joining. Uh, if you have questions, any specific questions, uh, uh, Amira is still here to answer them, or myself. Uh, and you can see our website here, studyssslc.com, and you can contact us, uh, you know, studyssslc.com slash contact. Uh, we have student advisors and marketers that speak your language, and we also have the chat box here, as you can see on our website. You know, you just type hi, and then you get your answer immediately. 
uh, it's a cool feature. Uh, and we'll get one of our uh, representatives, one of our advisors will get back to you uh, within 24 hours. Um, and you can easily navigate th through our website. Uh, you can see what page are we on here. This is about SSLC. Uh, you can go on to our pathway uh, page. If Jim can go on there and you can see our pathway partners as well on our uh, pathway partners page. We have over 35 uh, uh, partners in Canada. And of course, we are use one of them and we have uh, more pathway web webinars coming up. And Amira is also sharing uh, their online brochures. You can also check it out on the link that she shared. We have uh, more live webinars coming up. Here we are. Uh, I'll be live again next week, next Tuesday and Thursday. Next Tuesday, I believe we are hosting um, Mount St. Vincent University MSVU mm -hmm. uh, all the way from uh, Eastern Canada. So we go from coast to coast. <laughs> Uh, so you can just click on yeah, watch the webinar or uh, join our webinar. So MSVU and we have webinars uh, in different languages as well, in Japanese, in Spanish, with our with our uh, mm -hmm. marketing managers, uh, and we also have our own demo lessons for our career college uh, here in Vancouver uh, at VICCC. Um, so. Ilyas, may I ask yeah. a question? You said that sure. we were also streaming on Facebook. Is that on your Facebook page? Uh, yes, it was, yes. Okay, I'll, I'll make sure I go have a look later. Sure, uh, yeah, you can definitely, you should definitely uh, follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on all the, even on TikTok, if you have one, uh, you can follow us on our uh, social media channels. And yes, uh, we were on, uh, we were live on Facebook as well. And uh, you know, once we end uh, the webinar, uh, it's already recorded and uh, people can view it. Mm -hmm. I think if I may, there's there's one thing I would like to say to sure. students who are listening. I know the the uncertainty of today's environment makes us mm -hmm. all nervous about what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. But I do want to emphasize that you should not put your future on hold. You should not put your education on hold. If the best you can do right now is online studies with a Canadian institution, then you should grab that opportunity because it does have a silver lining. You can live at home, you can save some money on living costs, mm -hmm. upgrade, and then move to Canada as soon as the borders are open. Exactly. And uh, likewise, you can also join our online virtual programs, especially our EP program. Uh, we're still running it uh, online, our EP program. Uh, both in Toronto and Vancouver times. Uh, and we also have evening EP, uh, evening Vancouver time. Uh, so as Amira said, you can save lots of uh, money. You know, you can start studying uh, from, from your home country. And then Government of Canada has made things easier for international students. You know, you can, you know, once you submit your study permit application, you can basically, you know, it's not, it's not guaranteed that it's going to be approved, but they will take that time uh, towards uh, your PGWP, your post-graduation work permit. And uh, maybe we haven't mentioned this during the webinar, but VIU is obviously is a public university. So uh, once you graduate from uh, VIU, you will be eligible to apply uh, uh, for up to three years of uh, post-graduation work permit. So that's another advantage of studying at VIU, obviously. And uh, uh, you don't have to worry about studying online. As I said, uh, Government of Canada made things easier for international students. So you can start studying online with VIU or uh, with us and then to VIU and uh, your, your time uh, will count uh, towards your PGWP. Okay, uh, I guess that's all for today. Okay. Thank you, Amira. And no, I thank will, you, Elias. Uh, I'll see you, I'll see you uh, sometime uh, in the near future. It was such a pleasure and an honor to be here. Thank you for partnering with us. Really appreciate yeah. it. It's our pleasure. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Take care.
The sun hits the planet on a different kind of angle down here. It's beautiful, it's lovely, and it's sophisticated. Canada offers stunning landscapes, beautiful natural wonders, and the Sprotshaw Language College. Our school was founded to amplify and expand the opportunities you have in life. At Sprotshaw Language College, we want to put you on the path to greatness. We take great pride in serving as your educator, mentor, and advisor. At our core, we are educators. Nothing makes us happier than to see our students progress and develop personally. As a country, Canada is home to a great mixture of diverse nationalities, cultures and personalities. SSLC mirrors that spirit of multiculturalism on our campuses. Being surrounded by so many interesting people will inspire you to do great things. Vancouver is home to many attractions that bring people from all over the world. Join the incredible melting pot of ideas, philosophies, perspectives and ideologies that we call British Columbia. Many people are attracted to the cosmopolitan lifestyle that Victoria City offers. If you love living in a highly diverse, multicultural, modern city, living in Victoria will be perfect for you. As Canada's largest city, Toronto has unique opportunities you will not find anywhere else. Meeting interesting and influential people will increase Increase your chances of finding learning opportunities and discovering your true life's passion. Join us at Sprotshaw Language College to enhance the quality and success of your life. Now is your time.